What's going on everybody? This is Brendan back again with another video and today I'm going to be talking to you guys all about what is in my day-to-day -day set kit for film sets. So this is my personal set kit that I wear around my waist with this belt. I wear this every day that I'm on set doing uh, anything from cinematography, which is my main role, my main job, and also every once in a while I AC as well. So this kind of helps me fulfill both roles. Um, and I also have a larger tool kit, um, otherwise known as, I refer to as my set ditty, uh, or my ditty bag. Um, and that I will do a separate video on if you guys want me to, but that's basically all uh, other tools that I don't need uh, access to within hands reach at all times. Everything in here basically reflects stuff that I use uh, almost on a daily basis. So yeah, let's go through it. I'll take you guys through the kit itself and everything that I have inside. Um, so yeah, let's start out with the bag itself. This is a set wear bag um, and set wear belt and gloves as well. I'll come back to the gloves in a minute, but um, I got this from Film Tools. Uh, which is an online store and also a local store. Living in LA, it's so awesome that I can just drive to Film Tools and buy anything that I need. It's a really, really cool store. It's literally a dream store for filmmakers. That's where I bought this kit and a lot of the stuff inside this kit. Um, so yeah, that's Film Tools. I bought this like six years ago and still in great condition. And I'll probably have it for at least six more years, if not more beyond that. So if you look at the front of the bag, there is a big like ripped looking part right here. But that's basically a, a extra pocket that was on the outside of this that I cut off. I literally just cut it off with a big pair of scissors. Um, it used to have a little pocket for like a tape measure. And I used to put a tape measure in here, but I noticed I didn't use a tape measure often enough on set. Um, especially because I only AC some of the times. And even when I AC, I don't really use a tape measure that often to find my focus distances. Mostly I'm just pulling focus by eye or by marks that I set on my follow focus. So it's only occasionally that you ever need a tape measure, not something that I ever needed on hand. And I never, I didn't need to put anything else in that pocket. So I just cut the pocket off, moved the tape measure to my tool bag. And now there's kind of like an ugly, spot here where nothing exists anymore. I think they also make the same exact version of this bag without the tape measure pocket. Um, and that's just not the one that I had. Um, the only other thing that I would change about this bag is the Velcro closure for the main pocket. Uh, one, after six years, it's starting to wear out a little bit. So it still holds, but it's not, it doesn't hold quite as strong, but I would prefer to have a like a buckle closure, um, like a, a push buckle closure instead of the Velcro, which I know they used to make, or maybe they still do make with this model or a similar bag. And I prefer that because it's quieter. Velcro is just loud opening it on set. If the camera's rolling, you really can't open this bag without making too much noise. So, um, if I ever get, or whenever I get a new bag, I'm definitely going to get one with a buckle closure. But other than that, I absolutely love this bag. It's been great for me. So Let's start out with the gloves on the side here. Um, this is the one thing that I don't always have on this kit. In fact, most of the time I don't have my gloves hanging from the side like this. Um, I need gloves less and less frequently these days, especially uh, most of the lights that I'm lighting with these days as a DP are LEDs. Things like sky panels and light mats and aperture lights are the typical types of lights I use on set. Occasionally, if we have a tungsten light, like a, a Leco light, like a Source 4 or um, like an HMI or something like that, um, usually I don't really have to be touching those very often, if at all. So um, these are just for occasional use. It's easy to have these clipped on the side, uh, but these get the job done if you're just making a small tweak on like a barn door or something. Um, so yeah, I usually don't even have these on my kit. Um, the other types of gloves, sometimes if I'm on a cold set, if it's winter or if I'm up in the mountains and it's chilly, um, especially in the mornings, sometimes I'll just have a pair of winter gloves with me clipped on, on here. So yeah, most of the time I don't even have those gloves on here or anything on here. And I just clip it on the edge of this pocket just so it doesn't dangle around. Um, cool. So the rest of the stuff on the outside, there's a pocket on each side. On this pocket, I have my favorite trusty flashlight. This is the Olight S2R Baton 2. I love this flashlight for a couple of reasons. Um, it's small and lightweight. It's got nice knurling on the side here for a good grip. I really like the form factor. It has a nice clip here. So um, instead of just being a handheld flashlight, if I'm wearing a hat, usually I wear a hat on night shoots so I can 
clip this flashlight right to the brim of my hat and then I have a headlamp which is really nice it has a couple different brightness settings so I think that's the dimmest one if I press and hold it gets a lot brighter and then press and hold again it gets even brighter <laughs> Um, and then it has like a flash mode and stuff like that too. Um, so that's really nice. It's plenty bright. It lasts a really long time and it takes a rechargeable 18650 lithium ion battery, which is the same type of batteries that are used in like the Tilta Nucleus follow focus, for instance. So, um, they're, they're great. They last ridiculously long amounts of time and it can power this flashlight to get very bright for a very long period of time and I don't need to recharge it that often. It has a contact plate on the back for like basically just a magnetized recharger cable thing, but also this works on the same like uh, ultra fast charger uh, battery uh, charger thing that I have for my Tilta as well. So yeah, it's nice to have everything on the same type of battery, um, whether I'm pulling focus or DPing, either or. So that lives in this little pocket on the side and then clips in to keep it nice and secure. Use that all the time. Whether you're on a night shoot or whether you just roll up or wrap out in the dark. And oftentimes film sets are dark places anyway because you know you have your lights on your subject and right behind the light it's pitch black, you know. So sometimes it's nice just to have a flashlight for a dark corner to, to look through your Pelican case or whatever it is. On the other side, I have a bunch of C47s, so occasionally if I'm helping out with lighting and stuff, it's nice to have some C47s on hand to mess with some gels and stuff like that. I really like these ones. I think I picked these up from a grocery store or from Target or something. Um, the metal clips, they have like a stronger spring in them, and they're, they're that one goes fine. <laughs> they have these nice like rubber red grips to them like them a lot. I just keep like four on here. It's nice to have like two to four on hand in case I need to, you know, uh, rig up a gel or something like that or, or help an electrician with something. Um, so it's nice to have those on hand. And another nice thing about having more unique C47s like this is, you, you know, at the end of the day when you're cleaning up, which ones are yours and which ones aren't. So yeah, I like these a lot. They tend to be a little bit more robust and last longer than the wooden ones as well, which I, which I like. So in the inside here, I have a kind of like a main big pocket, which is just a pocket through the whole, the whole uh, pouch itself. And then uh, a couple of pockets on each side of the pouch itself. So for the main pocket, I just have the large, the large stuff that doesn't fit anywhere else. So every camera person uh, on the planet needs to have an air rocket or air puffer just for cleaning off lenses. So I love that. Then in here, I also have my little uh, Ziploc bag with my surveillance in it for the larger sets when we have a radio. It's nice to have your own surveillance so you're not putting someone else's like earwax, dirty earpiece in your ear. It's nice to have your own. These are like 60 bucks. Um, I think I got this from B&H or Film Tools or something like that. So I have that on hand. Then at the very bottom, I like to have a couple of bongo ties and zip ties, or not zip ties, uh, Velcro ties two of each of those for camera rigging stuff. And I have like a million more in my larger tool bag, but it's nice to have a couple of those on hand. They take up like no space and they just go at the bottom of this pouch. And then the last thing I have in this big pocket of the pouch here is this guy, which is a um, basically a little plastic card with a bunch of Velcro on it that I have all of my uh, camera tags on. So like my map box tags, this is just so that way you can mark in your map box what filters are inside the map box so you remember what's in there. And, uh, you know, if you need to double check, do I have a 0.3 in there or a 0.6? I don't remember what we put in there. And then you could just check the tag on the outside. So this is nice when I'm ACing or if I have an AC that doesn't have these, it's a nice little luxury to be able to tag your map box. Uh, I'm missing my 0.6 ND. I think I lost it on one of my recent shoots, so I have to get a new one of those. But as you can see, I just have a couple and there's so much space on here to build out your collection. Um, you can get all sorts of custom ones and they make all sorts of nice little plastic tag. So it's a little plastic piece that's engraved. You can get them in black with white letters like this or white with black letters, uh, uh, like red tags for A camera, blue tags for B camera, any color you want really. You can customize them, it's pretty cool. Um, you can get your own, you know, so if you use a certain filter a lot um, or if you're gonna be on a feature where you're using a certain diffusion filter or something, you can get these custom engraved with whatever filter you know you'll be using. So that's really cool. Um, so I have a clear, a Pola, all my NDs, and one blank tag for 
uh, most of the time for diffusion filters and stuff like that. But as you can see, I definitely need to um, build out my collection of those. But that's a cool little tool to have um, that is a nice little tip for you camera people out there. So that's everything in the main pocket. And then I just have a couple of pockets along the inside here. So in the front one, it's kind of a big pocket, and I just have a couple things in here. I have uh, a microfiber cloth. Again, every camera person should just have lots of different like lens cleaning solutions. So microfiber cloth, it's a little Zeiss microfiber cloth. And then at the bottom of this pocket, I have a bunch of Zeiss uh, cleaning lens cleaning tissues. So it's nice to have like these little ones where it, like they kind of look like condoms. They come in little bags. And uh, it's nice to have these instead of like a big bag of or a big uh, like tissue box of lens tissues and then pancro spray takes up a lot of space. You can have that in your main set kit, but it's nice in your little on hand uh, set bag to just have a bunch of those that you can grab quickly and it takes up virtually no space and like no weight whatsoever. So those are great. In the right pocket, so in the right side pocket here, I have my favorite tool and the most common tool I use in this whole kit, which is my Leatherman. Uh, another tool that every filmmaker set person should have. My favorite model, uh, this is the Wingman, the Leatherman Wingman. As you can see, at all times I have my little flathead screwdriver opened, um, so I don't even have to open it. I just pull it out because I use that flathead screwdriver basically every day. Um, especially if you're a camera person, you know that we always use flathead screwdrivers for everything. Um, the reason I love this particular model, the Wingman, is because it has the knife, which most most Leathermans have a knife, but it also has the scissors on the other side, which is nice to have. Just a small pair of scissors, which I use more often than you'd think. And it also has the pliers. So that particular combination of tools um, is what the Wingman, uh, is what I like about the Wingman. And there's a couple of other tools in here. I also have a, a Phillips head screwdriver and some other tools on the other side of the handle here, which I don't ever really access, but yeah. Those are the main tools in my Leatherman that I use all the time. And that lives in this side pocket here. And then on the opposite side, I have all of my pen tools. So my collection of different pens that I like to have at all times are a big fat Sharpie, a narrow tip Sharpie, um, a dry erase marker in black, black dry erase marker just as a backup, and a mechanical pencil. So that basically covers all your bases on any type of writing uh, <laughs> duties you would need to have on set. And I also have a little um, lens cleaning brush slash microfiber pad thing. Um, this is like a $2 Amazon Basics uh, tool that I've had for years and years, and it still comes in handy to just whip out the brush and dust off your lens if you need to. So I have that in my kit as well. I'm sure they sell higher quality ones, but it's such a blah tool that you don't need anything higher quality than that. And then last but not least, I have two little back pockets on the back side of the pouch here. And in each one of those, I just have one uh, Allen wrench tool. So I have my Imperial Allen wrench and my metric Allen wrench set, each one in a different pocket and labeled uh, gray and red. I always forget which one is which, and it doesn't actually say which one is which on here. Oh, yeah, it does. This is my Imperial, and that's my metric. Oh, no, this is my Imperial, and that's my metric. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, I use these all the time on set for camera rigging duties. So those go have their own pocket on the back for very easy access. So between those Allen wrenches and my flathead screwdriver on the Leatherman, that basically covers most of my camera rigging needs. And even with the pliers too, that kind of helps with camera rigging sometimes as well. And besides that, um, usually I have my AC for anything else I might need. Um, or my set kit, which has other various forms of pliers and like C wrenches and things like that um, for less common duties that I don't need immediate access to right away. But yeah, that is everything in my set kit. Um, that's what I use on a daily basis. Those are my favorite tools. And um, yeah, so yeah, that's basically it. So I hope that gave you guys some inspiration. I know sometimes these videos are just fun to watch, even if you don't plan on using any of the tips, just to know what other people are using in their day-to-day -day work is sometimes fun and entertaining. So hope you guys got something out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, that's it for me today. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.